In this video, we're going to take a look at fossil fuels as well as biofuels and look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of each. So let's start out with fossil fuels. Um, there are three types of fossil fuels. There's crude oil, uh, which is also known as petroleum. petroleum. There is coal and there is natural gas. Now, crude oil is non-renewable. It's uh, made up of a mixture of hydrocarbons, uh, which are, and, and uh, other or organic compounds containing nitrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. So nitrogen, sulfur, and oxygen, um, as well as a vari wide variety of other elements, but mostly hydrocarbons, so mostly made up of hydrogen and carbon. Um, in terms of fossil fuels themselves, all three are used as main fuels to generate electricity. Um, and so to generate electricity um, in power stations, as well as the internal combustion engines of cars. So um, you will used for your fuels in your cars. And um, one of the main sort of consequences of using fossil fuels is you get a large release of carbon dioxide, which is a product of um, a combustion reaction into the atmosphere. And this is very problematic. So we need to take a look at why this is so problematic. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. Um, so what that means, and we need to kind of go back to uh, thinking about climate change um, in our previous learning, but carbon dioxide uh, will trap heat energy inside the Earth's atmosphere. So this is known as the greenhouse effect. So essentially what's happening here is we're getting energy coming into the Earth. So this is our Earth here um, from the sun. And some of that is reflected back and escapes our atmosphere, but our greenhouse gases will keep some of that energy back into, um, into our atmosphere. So our atmosphere is made up of nitrogen and oxygen gas, about 99% of our atmosphere is actually both of those gases. And neither, neither of those can absorb the infrared um, heat that's being uh, emitted back off of the Earth's surface. But carbon dioxide, which makes up only about 0.04% um, of the atmosphere, uh, can absorb the infrared and will actually instead of releasing it and escaping back into space, it's going to um, reflect it and emit it, it back into the atmosphere. And some of that's going to be directed towards the Earth's surface. So this becomes very problematic when we're adding carbon dioxide to our atmosphere from using fossil fuels, because that's going to increase the carbon dioxide we have present in our atmosphere, which is going to increase the amount of infrared um, that's being directed back to the Earth's surface, which is going to then result in an increased temperature um, or increased global temperature. There are other greenhouse gases too, so things like methane, um, nitrous oxide, uh, water vapor, hydrofluorocarbons, um, but carbon dioxide's a pretty, pretty bad one and one that we, um, we can do something about. So um, essentially, as a result of this greenhouse effect and the increase in levels of the greenhouse gases, average temperatures around the world are increasing. And so this is known as global warming. So um, I just wanted to show this graph here because this is like really shows the impact of those human-made emissions, especially over the last sort of uh, century. So if we're taking a look at the carbon dioxide that's present in our atmosphere over time, um, for millennia, the atmospheric carbon dioxide has never been above this line here. So it goes up and down and it fluctuates up and down because we do have seasons. Uh, we do have carbon dioxide from... Um, different 
of sort of levels because we have winter versus summer. So it will fluctuate kind of back and forth there. But around the, um, the initial sort of uh, industrial revolution, that's when the levels started to really, really increase and they haven't stopped going up today. So today they are enormous compared to past uh, measurements, which really does show the impact of human-made emissions here. Now, many different fuels are used in everyday life and each fuel has a measurement called specific energy. So specific energy is in uh, megajoules per kilogram and it's essentially the amount of heat energy that's released per mass of the fuel. So looking at it, wood has the lowest specific energy and natural gas has the highest specific um, energy. And um, they all sort of vary in composition. So essentially the trend here is that the longer the chain length of the hydrocarbon, the more likely the fuel is to undergo incomplete combustion, which results in smaller heat per unit mass or smaller specific um, energy. So down this end is larger uh, chains of hydrocarbons. And up at this end is smaller chains of um, hydrocarbons, okay, generally. And the reason being is um, that we can tie this back to London forces, London dispersion forces. So larger hydrocarbons um, have reduced volatility due to stronger London dispersion forces. So these ones down here are stronger LDFs. Um, and this affects the way the hydrocarbon molecule will interact with the oxygen and the type of uh, combustion that occurs. So um, down here is more incomplete combustion. And then up here is more complete combustion. Okay, so a higher specific energy is really a good thing. So natural gas is one of the cleanest fossil fuels uh, that we can burn and one of the cleanest fuels that we can burn in terms of the fossil fuel types. And so we're talking about fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are non-renewable energy sources. Uh, so those like coal, natural gas, they come from sources that will eventually run out. There are renewable energy sources as well, and these come from sources that will not run out. So just some quick examples are things like tidal, solar, biomass, wind, and geothermal. These are all examples of renewable um, energy sources. And so one sort of renewable resource that we can talk about are biofuels. So these are produced from organic compounds which um, are going to help us to recycle through this different um, process. So if we start um, at the cycle and start with photosynthesis, photosynthesis is biological carbon fixation. So we're producing organic compounds from, uh, photos, uh, from uh, carbon dioxide. So we have our carbon dioxide, so this is just photosynthesis here, carbon dioxide and water to produce our glucose um, and our, I guess we can put a Q and six um, oxygen gas. Um, from there, we can take uh, that glucose and we can ferment it to produce ethanol, which is our biofuel. So the fermentation process is we're taking our glucose and O6 and we're producing um, ethanol, which is C2H5OH. Uh, that would be aqueous. And then we're producing carbon dioxide uh, gas again. Okay, so then that ethanol can be used to fuel our cars and then the carbon dioxide can be recycled back into our photosynthesis again. So carbon dioxide is produced in the, this cycle. However, it's offset by the absorption of a greater amount of C CO2 in the process of photosynthesis. So we're producing two moles of CO2 
um, from creating our fuel, but then we're using six moles of CO2 in order to fix and create that um, organic source to create our biofuel. So it's actually more advantageous to use this and a little bit better for the environment. So let's end off here with just a couple of advantages and disadvantages of uh, biofuels. So in terms of advantages, it's a renewable resource, reduced greenhouse emissions, it's sustainable, and we can use a wide range of plant materials and the waste can then be used for biofuel production. And then uh, economic security with a reduced dependence on imported oil supplies. So these are all great things and reasons why biofuels are awesome. Um, in terms of disadvantages, we do have to use agricultural land, water resources, fertilizers, and pesticides to grow the crops. Um, we also have a diversion of fruit food production into the production of biofuels. And monocultures can result in a reduction of biodiversity, uh, possible deforestation as the demand for biofuels increase, and there's a higher cost of production. So those are some of the advantages and disadvantages of biofuels. And that's also our fossil fuels versus biofuels um, in this video. So that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.